I'm Jim Nestor. I'm the women's lacrosse coach here at Salisbury University. This is my assistant coach, Allie Heinsen, who is a two-time All-American here, as well as a nursing major during her time. Today, we're gonna to go over some basic skills of girls lacrosse, and we'll try to get into some advanced skills as we go along. But we're really gonna harp on the basics and the skills that you need to master as a young player to be able to take your game to that next level and many to have fun with the game. The game is so much more fun when you're able to master these basic skills. So we're gonna go over catching today, passing, and feeding as three important skills that we feel that are very important for our younger players to master and things that you can be doing by yourself or with a partner or on a wall or a wall ball, um, a bounce back if you have one in your yard. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look to get into that right now. Before we actually get into catching, I wanna talk about our hand placement on the stick and how important it is uh, for things we wanna be doing and, and not doing um, that allows us to, again to have the most success. First things first, I like to talk to the parents in the regards of when a beginner is starting off, if you can have them start with a men's stick or a boy's stick, they're going to have so much more success. The ball's not going to pop out. They're just going to have more fun. And as they get older and get better, then you can gradually get into a girl's stick, uh, which is more difficult. It is more difficult to catch throw with a girl's stick than it is a boy's stick. So for them, as young ones, to have fun, have more success, I would suggest if you have a girl stick, make the pocket deep, illegal as you can to ha or starting off with a boy stick. They're just going to have so much more fun with it because of the success and it allows them to manipulate their stick, their wrist a little bit more when you're using a boy stick. So I like to talk about holding the stick. First things first. Um, Things we do not want to see, let's put it that way, because those are the things you can pick up right away. We don't want what I call a hammer grip, where they're tight around the handle, the hand doesn't move up and down, uh, the thumb's wrapped around. We want what we call an open palm grip. So I'm a righty, so my I'm right hand's at the top of my stick. We want it where we can actually see our palm. We want to be able to see you know, the stick, the shaft of the stick in our hand. We don't want to wrap around. Once we do that, we limit what we can do with the stick. We're very rigid. We want to be smooth. We want to have fluent motion. Um, so doing this, having an open palm, as you kind of say, allows me to move up and down, allows me to turn my wrist a lot more than a, a hammer grip. Hammer grip I kind of just limits things. So open palm, what we don't want to see at the same time is thumb off. We want the thumb always to be attached, let's say, to the shaft, um, as well as when we're cradling, or to another skill we're really not going to talk about, but cradling, we don't want that to come down like that and, and that thumb be exposed. The thumb should always be on. Now, when we are holding the stick, our hand will go up and down, right? The bottom hand will come up and down also, right? So again, nothing's so tight and rigid. We want to be able to have smooth, fluid motion when we're cradling and going into which we're going to talk about our passing and catching. Uh, but our hand positioning uh, is also very important. As we talk about catching, we want our hand close to the top. It doesn't have to be at the tippy top, but you only want it close. You'll get new players that start with their hands down here because this is comfortable. It's elbows in and they try to do everything from right here, hands so close together. And their eye-hand coordination now is off by, you know, 18, 20 inches. So when they go try to catch something, they can't. It, it makes it very difficult. Their hand will go up and down the, the shaft and uh, closer to the top on our catches. As we throw, we'll show it. Our hand will come down to make it a nice torque when we go to, to make our throw. Um, so our hands will move. Um, and now we'll go next into actually how we're going to catch the ball. All right, so we're going to go over catching now. There's a couple of different things that I want to stress on catching. As we had said before about our hand placement, we want it pretty close to the top of the stick. It doesn't have to be right at the top, but we want it close. We want it to be able to give. We want to ask for the ball. We kind of say in front of us, so our elbows are away from us, our elbows aren't locked. There's a soft bend to them. Our sticks are in front of us, of course. We're going to point the stick kind of where we want the ball to be caught. You know, we're giving them a target to aim at for their throw. And then as the ball is coming in, we're going to go, and go opposite directions. Our top of the stick is going to give with the ball, be a cushion, and the bottom stick is going to go this direction with it right now, especially for beginners. So as the ball is coming in, I'm going to watch it in. So some key points are watching the ball in. Any sport, you watch the ball all the way into the stick. 
right? So as the ball's coming in, I'm gonna be soft with it, I'm gonna catch it, and my shoulder's gonna drop a little bit, my hands are gonna be soft with it, the bottom of the stick's gonna come up, and I'm not worried about showing the bottom of the stick right now, I'm gonna let it show, I'm gonna be soft, so the opposite ends are going in the opposite direction. So top and bottom are going in the opposite direction, giving, and I'm gonna start my cradle, but I on the ball all the way in, soft hands as we say so as a ball is coming in we want to be soft and cushion the ball because with a girl stick if i go to this ball it's going to knock the ball right out it's going to be like playing tennis i'm going to knock the ball right out. i want to give with the ball i need to be soft on the cushion of it and then i'll start my cradle so a couple throws would kind of look like this as i was throwing i'm soft i'll start my cradle I asked for it kind of in front of me, I'm soft on it. So the top went this direction, the bottom went that direction, the cushion to blow. So before it arrives, I'm starting to give, as the ball's coming in, I'm starting to give, soften the blow. I can't go to it, or it's just gonna bat it right out. So I'm soft on the catch, and I start my cradle. So I asked for it a little bit in front of me, and I'm giving with it. Even you see the shoulder drop back. So it's soft, so it's not just bouncing out. Like I said, for a girl stick, it's very tight compared to a boy stick. That's why I want you starting with a boy stick. So again, you're going to have more success. You learn this part instead of it just constantly popping out and bouncing out on you. So again, we're throwing. Elbows, hands come up. I give on my soft on the catch. Then I'm going to start my cradle, and then I throw it or run down the field. So I'm asking for in front of me, I'm soft on the catch. You see how it could pop out, all right? So as it comes in, I'm being soft. I'm asking for in front of me, giving, and I want to cradle after elbows up on our throw, which we'll talk about. So one more time, I'm giving, soft on the catch. Ends up being this way, top and bottom going opposite directions, just so, again, we're making that cushion as soft as possible. So next we're gonna do this in the moving sense because not too often we're standing still in the game. We'll be going on a run and catching the ball. Okay, so we're going still over catching and this is the point where what happens most in the game, you're catching the ball on the run. So as you'll see Allie, she's going to run towards me. She's going to have her stick out in front and as the ball comes in, you're going to see her give with it and then she's going to be doing her cradle, but watch out her feet. They never stop moving on the catch unless it's maybe a bad throw. But the pass should be you know, where we want it. She's giving me a target. I'm going to throw to her stick. I'm going to pass it to her stick, and she's going to catch it, and she's going to keep moving her feet. She's not stopping. So that's a really important part, especially with beginners. They're going to want to stop. So watch her feet as they, she continues running through her catch. So this is what it should look like. One more. Okay. So, a lot of times, as I said, as that ball goes in the air, a lot of beginners will stop because they're just unsure of themselves. But that's something we want to make sure. So this is something we're, we're looking at or as a parent, you want to make sure that this is what we're not seeing. I'll do it one more time. So you can see as she's running, once the ball is released, they usually stop. So we want to continue, so this last one, she'll run through her catch one more time. Again, look at where her hand is, pretty close to the top. Look how she gives with it and makes the cushion soft on the, on the catch part. So again, those soft hands are what we're really looking for. As well as you might even see her shoulder drop back a little bit because she's running one direction, the ball is going in the opposite direction, so we really need to cushion that ball as it lands in the stick um, when you're really running, especially full speed. So this is what it would look like again. So catching the ball, catching the ball on the run is obviously very important because obviously this is a running game, We're running all over the field, whether it's a five yard pass, 10 yard or 25 yard pass, or it could be a 40 yard pass. Um, you need to be able to catch the ball on the run as we do things. Now that is a direct pass. That's going directly towards her. So now we're gonna talk about something that happens in all the games, a little more advanced, especially for a younger player, but which we call is an over shoulder pass catch. So I'm going to pass it over her shoulder. She's going to catch it over her shoulder, which is really called a lead pass also. 
So we're going to show you that here in one second. So another type of catch is an over the shoulder catch. So this is kind of more like transition type of a catch that we're looking over our shoulder, we're running up the field and we're going to be running with the bottom of our stick on our, if I'm a righty, I'm going to have the, my left hand bottom of the stick on my left hip. So I'm not going to reaching back on this, okay? A lot of newer players reach back to catch this ball. We want to let the ball come over my shoulder, kind of like a football player runs out down the field to catch an over the shoulder pass, a long deep ball. Same thing with lacrosse. We're going to be running down the field, catching that ball. My hand's definitely at the top of the stick to begin with on here. And as it comes over the shoulder, I'm just going to watch it in. I'll start my cradle. But we're not doing this, not bringing the butt end to the same side that I'm looking over, because then that's not really feels good. We want to be comfortable, hips going the same direction, shoulders going the same direction, and let the ball do the work as I can adjust to make that catch, or if I got to reach, which we'll show here in a second also. But for the basic part, you're going to see Ali just cut straight up the field. I'm going to give her a lead pass, which means it's in space and she's gonna catch it over her shoulder. And then we'll show about when, what happens when we usually reach back when we do that type of a catch. But this is what makes it a little bit easier. Your speed keeps going up the field and we let the ball do more of the work than, than me having to turn around and, and make something difficult. So this is what kind of looks like an over shoulder pass. A catch too. So again, the pass has to usually in front of them without me having to adjust too much and she lets the ball come right over her shoulder, as you see. She's running up the field. I see the stick, I see the target, but I know where it's gonna be, and I put it like five steps in front of her. So again, really far in front of her, she really had to reach. So on that one, again, I'm saying keep your hand top of the stick, but depending where the pass goes, depends on what you're gonna to have to do, because you're never gonna get a perfect pass. So on that one, she really had to reach. Now, if I really overthrow her on these next two, she's gonna to have to take a top hand off even, and maybe make a one-handed great grab. So again, she's running up the field, keep two hands on, but once she realizes, hey, this isn't catchable with two hands on, she'll take the top hand off and try to make that extending grab with one hand on her stick, and then she'll bring it in and start her cradle. All right? Right. Were you able to get that one? Uh, that was a perfect long reach out grab. She would never have been able to catch that. She kept two hands on the stick. So again, just tip, it's real close, it's right there, but she can also get to that ground ball first. Okay, one more. Now that was short, so she kept two hands on. She didn't need to take two hands off since it came up short. Now you see also, she was asked for it high, it came short on her, so she just caught it down low. Okay, but she didn't do this. She kept the stick, butt end of the stick on her left hip, allowing her, again, to be going in the right direction. It allows a cradle to come right up after, instead of trying to catch something like this. So, we're going to show you what happens when you do reach back and try to catch the ball behind you too often. We're going to do that next. Another point to this over the shoulder is we want our hips and shoulders running up the field. That's how we sprint down the field. That's how you sprint down a track. So as I'm running down the field, we're showing we want to ask for the ball in front of us with our shoulders looking like this so the ball does the work. But you'll see a lot of new players will be asking for it behind them. Now there's a time for that, but again, most times we want to ask for it in front. So when I've asked for it behind me and the ball is now in the air, I could then as I go to cradle, cradle it right out of my stick. So as I reach back and it comes in, my first cradle's got to go this direction. It could actually just cradle right out of the stick. So when we're looking at this catch, we want it like this, but if I ask for it behind me and I go and I catch and cradle, my first cradle normally is gonna pop right out. So this would be if I get the bad pass. I'm asking for it here, but it is thrown behind me. Then I would make that type of adjustment just to be able to try to get a catch. And a lot of times you can, but again, a lot of times for beginners, that first cradle goes right out of your stick. So we'd like to hear, you can reach back, maybe if it's a bad pass behind you, they didn't put it too far in front where we would like the pass to be, so I can make those one-handed grabs if I really have to. So when we're looking for that over shoulder, we're looking for more with the bottom of the stick on our left hip side, looking over our right shoulder from a righty, let the ball come over my shoulder to make that catch high, low, 
one hand off to make that great catch if it's over my head. Next, we're gonna go over again. When we pass for a ball at certain spots, we get a bad pass, we're gonna show you how to make adjustments. Now in the game of lacrosse, we like to get a perfect pass every time, but as we all know, that just doesn't happen. So a lot of times I'm, I'm a righty, so I'm asking for it on my right side, but the pass is then passed high, low, but on my opposite side, my left side. So I have to make adjustments. So there's gonna be times when it's gonna be high, and I'm gonna have to come across my body to make that catch, or it might be waist low, and I might have to come underneath the way I call a basket catch, and catch it underneath and then start my cradle. So again, you're never gonna get a perfect pass. It could be right at my feet. I'm about to just drop down, make a basket catch type pass. Stick still stays on that opposite hip. Okay, on anything low, that stick stays on the opposite hip. We're not coming down and crossing hands, anything. I'll just catch it over here, watching it in, and starting my cradle. If it is high, kind of two different ways you could do that. You could do a big cradle, so it turns my wrist already, so I can go right into my cradle motion, or you got some people just come straight across their body, and that ends up turning their wrist, because our wrists need to be on this type of a look to start that first cradle. Okay, so if I come over, I take my wrist and bring it over. So I see the really top of my wrist here, I'm looking at the palm. So once that comes in, I can then bring it back into a cradle motion. If it's going low, it's low, I'm gonna start my cradle motion and bring it back in. So I'm gonna pass the ball to Allie, and you kind of see, I'm gonna give her bad passes. She was asking for it on her right. I'm gonna throw it to her non-dominant side, and you can just kind of see her make these adjustments. Okay, I'm gonna go low. Okay, so now we're gonna look for more of something below the waist. So as you can see, as she grabs, and catches the ball, she's starting right into her cradle. And as you get older, more experienced, you can again adjust these different types of catches. Um, from running down the field 40 yards to something in tight here. You have to be able to, again, to protect your body, because some of those passes will go right at your body. That's why we want the hand at the top, close to the top of the stick. So if it does come right at your face, you can use that stick to protect yourself. My hand's all the way down here, and I come in to protect myself, it's probably coming right past this head of the stick. So if I have my hand at the top of the stick, close to the top, I'm at least gonna have better protection for my face area. So that's another reason when we talk about how to keep our hand closer to the top, it is for protection also on those ones that come directly at you. And you'll get passes that do that. Um, but again, that's what the stick is for, to protection. That's why it's out in front of you too. So if it is coming right at your face, you can get that stick in front of you, block it, catch it, and may hopefully start your cradle. So next we're gonna end up going into our next skill. Another skill, and it's a little more advanced, is a one-handed catch. And usually you'll see this off the draw control. It could be an open field, but usually you'll see it more on the draw control. It is a one-handed grab where the ball is too high for you to keep two hands on the stick. You're trying to catch it at its highest point. And usually you are battling somebody right next to you. And I'm jumping, Allie's jumping. We're both trying to get the ball at its highest point. So this is something that's kind of fun. You can definitely do this by yourself. One thing you want to make sure that you're doing is tossing up really high. So you are catching at its highest point. If you're doing one hand down here, you might as well just keep two hands on your stick. So as you'll see, Allie demonstrates, she's gonna to toss it up as like she's doing a draw. She's tossing it up high and catching it at its highest point. Now with this, you can do it kind of two different ways. You know, I'm a righty, I like to toss it up and keep my left hand at the bottom and then reach at its highest point. Then you'll see Allie tossing it and you'll see her top hand, which is her right, she tosses it up and then she keeps that top right hand on. Uh, so there's different ways you can do it. It's kind of finding what fits best for you. Um, and being able to mainly catch it at its highest point is the whole battle of out-rebounding, let's say, whoever you're going against. Besides being out in open field and your teammate just sails one over your head, you might need to make this one-handed grab. And it's nice and kind of fun to practice on your own. So we'll watch Allie. So you can see, we're trying to catch it, and then as you get progressed, you can try to actually jump and get the ball at this highest point, 
and I'll jump in if you're fighting for someone off that draw control or even on the circle maybe. Um, again, the highest point you're reaching, hand usually at the bottom of the stick, big long reach, and this is where again that upper body strength comes in of being able to take it out of there and control it until you can get that top hand usually on. So next we're going to start to actually get into throwing. So just a quick review on our catching and our hands. Remember, we don't want a tight grip on our stick. We want a nice, loose, open palm grip so our hands can slide up and down. We want to make sure that, um, you know, again, there's fluent motion with our catching. We're being soft. As well as some pointers that if you're seeing this continually, you'll see some players try to snatch the ball out of the air. They're taking that big surface area and they turn it, trying to snatch it, and they make that surface area really thin. It's got to be perfect then. You'll see the ball just tip off. So again, I'll throw it to Allie and you'll see when she does that how difficult it can make that. You'll see these players try to snatch it. Watch it in. Keep the face open as big as possible and then being soft. And remember, we want to give with it. We don't want to take the stick to the ball. Okay, we don't take it at the ball. We don't take the stick to the ball. We don't take it at it. It'll bounce right out on you. And here's some examples. And you see he's trying to snatch that. So when we're looking at things, we want to give with the ball, we want to be soft, and we want to make sure that we're watching it all the way in. So next we're going to get into our passing. So next we're going to talk about passing and we're throwing the ball. But with our passing, it's very important that with our hands, and elbows that are up and away from our body, we feel, especially for beginners, just to start things off. So we kind of talk to um, our beginners around. We have our hands kind of down and kind of closer together, um, you know, making it real easy just to push-pull motion. But the elbows, these motors are up, elbows up, and kind of pointing toward my target. But the main thing is they're up, and the stick is pretty much parallel to the ground to begin with, I like. To be able to, I'm going to pull with the bottom hand, and I'm pushing with the top and I'm going to release the ball pretty much straight up so that motion kind of looks like this, a simple push-pull, pulling down, pushing with the top. If I took the bottom hand off, I'm just snapping my wrist. The bottom hand's kind of along for the ride, adding a little power to it. But you'll see my follow-through, it's kind of going to stop kind of high so the ball stays high. And I'll show you what happens if I follow through low where the ball is going to go. So for me and I just pass it back and forth, I bring the stick up parallel, hand is now again about 12 inches down, and I'm just going to push-pull. Stopping with the follow through high, giving on my catch. If I would cradle, I'd bring it up parallel. If I took the bottom hand off, again, I'd snap the wrist. And again, stopping here, I'm asked for a front of me, I give. Elbows are up again, just on the basics. And I'm going to pull and push, simple push here. Asking for it, as you guys see the follow through, again, a little bit across your body. Um, your hand will slide down. That's why we don't want that, that hard, strong grip, hammer grip. Because if I do that, then it's kind of like this, which really feels odd, looks odd, and it's not smooth. As I'm cradling open palm again, as I throw, you know, that hand will slide down two or three inches. Then I need to work on bringing it back up. This is where they throw, and then they keep their hands here, and then they have that big adjustment period to try to recover from. So again, our hand will come back up after I throw it, so it is close to my head of the stick, so I can protect my face off a pass that might go right at me again. So elbows up, big part with throwing. Everyone wants to throw in here, this is comfortable. Okay, this is where it's comfortable and kind of we say lazy a little bit. All right, we want those elbows up. I can generate power, and again, it's easy to push, pull, especially for beginners. All we need is this motion here. Get that motion down, then we can add in other things as we do things to make that same throw. Elbow, bottom hand, the stick has to come up. So next we're going to show you some basic kind of mistakes that are happening, but we'll get a couple more throws in of just simple push-pull motion. So again, giving, push-pull, little cradle if I want, but you see where the ball is on this stick, it's at the tip of the stick, and it comes right out the top of the stick. So again, parallel to the ground makes it much easier for beginners on that throw, simple pull, push. But if this is something next we're going to go over, things that, um, that you'll see mechanic-wise that makes it harder um, 
and we want to kind of correct right off the bat. So some basic mistakes that we see with throwing, especially with younger players. Um, if you can identify, you can kind of help correct them. Uh, so again, they're having more success. And here's a couple basic ones. One, they're, they're cradling, and then they go into their throwing motion, and they bring the head of the stick too far down, so the ball pops out. So they're cradling, then they go to throw. They're trying to get everything up, like I said, and they do this. And the ball pops right out on them. So they're cradling, and they have to get into that throwing motion. We want to bring that bottom hand up, but then they bring the top of the head down. So they do this, and it, and it drops out on them. That's one you might see every now and then. Another one, more popular in regards to popular, that you see more often is the throws are always to the ground or to their feet. That's because they're not getting their bottom hand up enough. They're cradling more stick straight up and down. And as they go to bring the bottom hand up, they just don't bring it up high enough. Again, I can't say lazy, but bring her, keeping her elbows in. And then to throw, it just goes down to the ground. So if Ali's throwing it to me, I catch it. Now I want to go back to throw it to her. Instead of getting this all up and being able to simple push pull, I'm pulling and pushing. But this, from here, the only way the ball can come out at this angle is to the ground, especially for a beginner. As, an upper, you know, as you play oh, more, you can get a little more skill set, you can keep it off the ground. But normally it's here, and they throw it. Even though they're aiming at the stick, it goes straight to the ground because I'm following through to the ground. Um, last one that you'll see a lot of beginners, they're pushing the ball out of the stick. It's that snapping the wrist. The top hand, as it's pushing, the bottom hand's kind of pushing too. So you'll see them do like this. So they're cradling it, hopefully then, instead of just snapping the wrist, they kind of, kind of try to push it out. And that's really not going to be successful, especially in the long run, of course. Um, so again, they want to snap that wrist, simple push pulls on that, but elbows up and away is a huge factor uh, for beginners. And then as you get older and better, you can keep those wrists in and elbows in more. Uh, but for beginners, that simple push-pull, it learns them to make well, throw the ball 40 yards if they really want, elbows up, to generate a lot of power using their core. Um, so next, and what we're going to end up with, will be feeding. Another type of a pass, it's to a cutter, but we're going to go into feeding next. Now we're going to talk about feeding. And feeding is just a, a, another type of pass, but I'm passing to a teammate who's cutting usually in the eight for that much. Um, and she's hopefully going to be able to catch and get a shot off the, so we can score. So with feeding, I'm definitely going to have a defender on because I'm a scoring threat myself usually. So I need to protect the ball and protect the stick. So ultimately we say kind of elbow, shoulder, shoulder, ball. Okay, so again, you can kind of lead. If this was my defender in front of me, I've got the stick behind me. I've got a lead foot and I'm sideways on protecting the stick. And of course, I'd be cradling. Now, as I'm looking at scanning the field, I'm watching for players that I can pass to or feed to. Now, Allie's going to cut for me, and she's not going to be a, what we call a scoring threat. So she's cutting, um, and I'm going to give her a lead feed. So I'm not passing actually to Allie. I'm passing to the space that Allie's cutting and running into. So hopefully you can see the ball in a, in a space that Allie's not in yet and she's going to run on and catch it. So we call that, again, a lead pass, lead feed, um, to give us a good scoring opportunity. But the stick is behind. I'm not throwing shoulder to shoulder, where, again, my stick can be checked. It's behind me, elbow, shoulder to shoulder, protecting the stick. So this is kind of what it would look like in a hopefully game scenario with Allie making a cut. We'll do one more. Now, very important, especially for beginners, you'll see Allie, when she's catching this ball, she runs through it. A lot of times, beginning players will start their cut, then they'll stop. When I'm the feeder, I'm throwing to the ball where I think you're going to be three or four steps from now. So I'm not throwing it to you. I'm not feeding you. I'm feeding the space. And then Allie runs into that space, so your cutter will run in. So again, watching Allie, how she continues running through her catch. We'll do one more. So as you can kind of see, the feeds were in front of her. She had her stick out in front of her, giving me a target. But again, I'm putting the ball away three or four steps in front of her. So she runs into that space and catches it on the run. Um, one more, let's say a little bit of an advance feed would be maybe a sidearm feed. So my defender's all over me. They got their stick in that passing lane so I could probably get blocked. 
So I might need to fake high and then step and pass around so it couldn't look like this. Yeah, one more. So I need to make my own pass lane at times. I fake high, boom, step around my defender, and again, put it in front of her so she can make that catch on the run. And that's, again, one area you have feeding all around this eight and around the 12. This is just one area we focused on today. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this short video, uh, again, on basic skills and how important they are to master and having fun while you do it. So just, again, reiterating, starting off with a boy stick for the beginners, much more fun, much more successful, allows them to do more tricks, um, gets them being more creative, and that's a big thing, especially at the young age. Let them have fun, let them be creative, um, and as a parent, when you see things, you can help correct. Uh, mechanics it's going to help them just you know gain that knowledge and skill a little bit faster um, here at Salisbury University in our women's lacrosse program we're always running camps and clinics here um, throughout the summer hopefully you can attend one of them improving your stick skills but at the end of the day it really takes a player that wants to get better having their stick in their hand even if you're walking around the house practicing your cradling uh, having your stick in your hand as much as possible, just like anything else you do, you're going to get better. You're going to reap the rewards of that hard work um, while you have your stick in your hand and, and having fun while you do it because that's why we play the game. Hope you enjoyed your day.